Hey, Mr. Paul. Can you hear me okay? Hello. Can you hear me? Turn my volume up. There we go. Can you hear me, uh, Mr. Paul? Yes, I can hear you, Dirk. Yes. Good deal. <laughs> uh, so, uh, well, before I say anything else, this is Paul Wather. And um, I've never been out of the country, so can you just tell me how, how was Jamaica? Jamaica was terrific. My daughter just got married there, and we had a lot of fun. It was, it was a really good time. I'm glad. Have you, uh, you ever been there anywhere like that before? Well, I was in the military at 18, so I did travel in the military. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, well, if you don't mind, um, welcome to uh, Who You're Up Against interview series. And uh, if uh, you're okay, I'll just fire off with some questions. Go ahead. All right. We'll just start out with uh, what's your name, where you're from, and uh, what weight class you normally compete in. Well, my name's Paul Walther, and I'm originally from New Jersey, but I, I've lived in North Carolina for the last 16 years. All right, cool. And my weight classes have been from 190 to unlimited. Okay, cool. And so um, how long have you been arm wrestling for? 32 years. 32 years. So uh, if, you, if you don't mind thinking back, can you tell me just a little bit about what it was like maybe uh, the first time you either arm wrestled or the first time you remember stepping up to a competition table? I, well, I started, I started arm wrestling as a kid with my father. Oh, all right. Other, other kids in school, my teacher liked doing it in uh, elementary school, so we uh, arm wrestled throughout elementary school, mm -hmm. and then in the I arm wrestled some. And then the, the first tournament I went to was a uh, Yukon Jack regional tournament in uh, New Jersey. Okay. So I, uh, my dad called me up and said, hey, let's go to a tournament. I didn't know I was going to pull in it. But he, he, he paid for me to pull in it, and I, I did pretty good. All right, cool. And so uh, by any chance, would you happen to know what year that was or even a guesstimate? And uh, can you tell me about anybody that you remember being there? Uh, it was 1990. Okay, 1990, Yukon Jack. Does that yeah. mean uh, her that uh, – um, oh my gosh, I can't even think of his name. The humongous uh, man with the huge hands. Uh, oh, uh, Does that mean not, He wasn't at the qualifier in New Jersey, but the place was okay. packed. Oh, it okay. was at LT's restaurant, Lawrence oh, Taylor's okay. New Jersey. Oh, all right. And, and I mean, Bob Brown was from New Jersey. Bob yeah, Brown. Rob was there. There was a bunch of guys there that I'm I, sure I, there was. I, I never knew. <laughs> But I did pretty good, and they, then they started inviting me to practices and stuff, and I started going to practices in New Jersey, mostly with guys that were smaller than me, but okay. we, had, we had a good, uh, good team. Good, so, good uh, do you mind telling me a little bit about maybe, uh, if you can remember back, what your mindset was like or how your, your maybe first five years of training and progression went in the sport? Well, I knew – I had to, I was 27 at the time, so I knew I had to learn fast. Uh -huh. So in my first 15 months, I went to 21 tournaments. Oh, okay. So between practicing and going to tournaments, I figured that would be the best way. And then, I, I mean, my training, I did lift weights and stuff, but it was mostly from pulling and uh, going to tournaments. But I did do a lot of pull-ups. I did I did a lot of hand stuff, pull-ups, uh -huh. and I, I I worked out constantly. Actually, oh, sure. well, I mean, so. you, you said everything right there when you said uh, whatever it was. I can't rattle it off. The twenty-two tournaments in fifteen months, I think it was, or something, or the yeah. other, or the other way around. But either way you put it, you were crazy active. If you had the opportunity to compete and do ready goes, you did them. And I feel like a lot of people these days aren't doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not competing quite that much, but I try to when I can. But I feel like a lot of people, they arm wrestle, but I don't know, you know, if you want to get better, you got to put your arm down with referees. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. And then, like, today, guys go to tournaments once every yeah. four months or whatever. Yeah. Is, you know, back, back in the day, we, we go to tournaments every other week. Yeah. We just keep 
tournaments. Wherever there was a tournament in the Northeast, we'd go. So, just it was just yeah. a, just a different thing, huh? Well, hey, um, if you don't, can you if you uh, think back maybe throughout your career, can you think of anybody who was maybe a rival or somebody who you feel like you're always going up against or that you uh, you kind of always trained for or anything like that? Well, I mean, there was some really good guys in the 198 pound class back okay. in the early 90s, like Larry Fontaine, mm -hmm. Jason, Jason Bill, move up, Bobby Botafuco, George Gibbons, uh, a couple guys from uh, Virginia, Tom Watson and Bob Lear. <coughs> they were all great arm wrestlers. So anytime those guys showed up, it would be, we would have wars. So. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's exciting because one thing I can say, and uh, I don't know if it's a good thing, but I didn't know any of those names. So the people you're yeah. rattling off, and I'm yeah. not saying I'm not trying to be rude or anything. All I'm trying to say is that this yeah. new the new era of arm wrestling, a lot of these guys just don't really have a clue of like the way things were, or maybe the old school. Yeah, so these guys are being for. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, they, they, they were good arm wrestlers, really good. Yeah, well, I'm not saying they weren't good. All I was trying to say is, is that uh, a lot of guys, I've only been doing it for 18 months, and we just don't know the history of years and years ago because we were right. But Yeah, I mean, even back in the day, we used to have wrist wrestling tournaments where you grab right. the other guy and we, you go back and forth. You're pulling the other guy's opposite hand back and forth trying to pin the other guy on, on your bicep. Right, and so – um. Now, now that you mentioned that, can can you tell me a little bit about the table setup and and the rule set? Whenever you first started, was it like in the cup, like in the you know what I mean, the cup bowl, and then it was wrist wrestling or? Well, I mean, we had the cup and we had the pads were straight across from each other, uh -huh. and you had to try to match back pressure. Okay. You couldn't do a loose grip. You had to, the refs would hold you in the middle, even if the other guy was overpowering you. Oh, so, oh, okay. So if the other guy loaded, he loaded, and that was it, huh? Oh yeah. And then with the wrist wrestling, we just it was a flat table, and you you put your one, you grab the other guy's hand, and you just try to pin him on your bicep, basically. Right. Got yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, it's, let me I, let me just ask you this: If somebody were to make an old school, have an old school wrist wrestling tournament with the old yeah. rules and maybe even made a mock table. Do you think anybody would be interested in trying it these days? Uh, yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's more of a power pulling inside pulling type of, of thing. It's not too yeah, much. True. Everybody, everybody loves to, to fairy finger walk and top roll do don't they? Yeah. A lot of guys. So, so I, I, I hook on my team and everybody talks trash. They're like, you need a top roll. Yeah, I don't. I don't teach that. I'm like top roll if you can. <laughs> right. But, but most of them can. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I'm dedicated. I, I like pulling inside. I like top rolling. I, I want to win, but I, I I'm not scared to hook. Right. And a huh? lot of people are. But anyways, um, yeah, that'd be cool. I was just wondering because I had never seen a wrist wrestling tournament before. Like, yeah. Uh, like it seems like nobody's. You know, I've seen some sit downs in Virginia. I went to that one, but. Uh, and people are, it seems like people are messing around with rules and trying different things. I was just wondering if anybody would be willing to bring back the, like where you said you hook the hands and then, and then try to see what you can do. I think yeah. it'd be interesting, you know, instead of grabbing a peg, reach across and grab the guy's hand and try to pin him. Oh, yeah. But, I would anyways, <laughs> um, moving on. So, um, I've already asked you about your rival. So who would you say, is there anyone in your past that you can think of that was just either irreplaceable or somebody that was just a lot of a motivation or just a great training partner or, or anything along those lines? Well, I would say John, John Brzezink was always my motivation. Just, okay. just, I admired the guy. He was a professional. He did everything. He did everything good. He was just, he was a real pro. He, wow. he had weak points. He could do really really good yeah so every, so every time you arm wrestle him no matter what no matter what you tried it seemed like you had an answer i'm not saying you yeah. may or may not have got a win on him but i'm just saying for the most well, part he's pretty solid everywhere yeah I, I pulled john twice in 1995 so it was pretty early in my career but uh 
yeah, I mean, he, he would turn me into a hook. I, honestly, my top role was better, but he wouldn't go into a top role with me. So okay. so he just turned me into a hook. And I had no, no answer for him. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's fun. He's fun to watch it. Well, the reason I'm smiling is because I started arm wrestling when COVID happened, and then I right. was pulling John. And so, of mm-hmm. course, it's him and Travis Bajan, and then they arm wrestle. You know, and then yeah. um, the Russian guy – that's a bobsledder, you know, you know the story. And so I've always admired John and I've always thought Travis was kind of a jerk. <laughs> right. He's fun and he's entertaining, but uh, yeah. sometimes I think he's a little rude, but anyways. Yeah, I mean, when I was younger, when I was younger, Jason Vale, Mike Solaris, Bobby Botafuco, we all practiced together. Uh, Chris Myers, okay. there's a bunch of, and then uh, Christian Benny, Marcio. Used to come to my house and practice a lot every really, week. Awesome. Yeah, so we had a, a really good group of guys. We go out to Jason's ha- house in Queens, and there, there'd be twenty guys over there. We pull for three, or four hours. All and right. Then, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I gotta admit that uh, I know you know Gary Roberts because I I'm yeah. sure because he's yeah. videoed you before because I've seen the arm TV the old school matches where your hair is like jet black like mine like everywhere yeah. you got a go like a thick goatee and i seen you with michael todd and i seen you with these different guys uh, i don't know what what the match was but, but i'm just saying i've seen you back in the day um yeah pulling and yeah. Everything in snippets and like snippet you know like little bit of matches where they're running two tables and gary's running back and forth i've seen you several times and uh so i've been wanting to talk to you for a while because i know you've been around but, yeah i pulled Matt Gerdner, Michael Todd, Marcio, mm-hmm. Dave Randall, Cleve Dean. I mean, I pulled all the top guys that ever pulled in the U.S. Basically, uh, so. yeah, yeah, that's that's fun. And yeah. um, so, um, I'm just getting. I'm just wondering if you don't mind me asking. I know that there's. I've asked. I ask everybody, and so far, I got to give credit to Brandon Elsesser because he's. Um, you know, he actually admitted. When I asked him, he was honest about, you know, what he did. But have you ever had any experience with steroids or uh, do you have an opinion on people that use it in the sport or anything along those lines that you'd like to speak on? Yeah, I, I've never used steroids. I don't even take the last 10 years. I've probably taken protein powder five times and five times in the last 10 years. So I don't take anything at all except for vitamins that my wife gets me at the store. But uh I think steroids is putting the sport back about five years, actually. I think seeing these guys going to these top tournaments is actually hurting the grassroots of arm wrestling. And in, a lot of guys don't want to take it as serious because they know that they would have to get on that juice to perform at that top level. You know, mm-hmm. It's bad, really. I think, I think it's actually hurt hurting the sport right now and all the self-promotion I, I don't know these guys a lot of these guys make themselves out to be supermen and they're not no. regular and actually they steal titles from guys who don't do steroids in my opinion they're thieves they're stealing from a guy who works hard to you know to to be fair so i call it stealing stealing titles that's what i call it so. Yeah. Well, hey, those are strong words, and uh, I, I've met you a few times, but I feel like I know you well enough to know that you'll back it up too. If somebody thinks okay. they can beat you, then come on, try it. <laughs> I mean, I plenty of guys on steroids, plenty of them. I can tell most of the time when they're on, uh-huh. but uh, and it actually feels good to beat guys half my age That's that way cool. more than me or whatever, and I still can beat them. So. I don't know what that says, but you know. to me it says that hard work <laughs> beats steroids if steroids don't work hard is what it tells me. Yeah, except the guys at the top, the top guys on steroids, they're usually strong. They got one position that they're usually really strong at, you know. Yeah. So, but I I feel like. When you're not on steroids, you have to be more of a well-rounded arm wrestler. You got to be able to do everything well. Yeah, you know, so which is what I enjoy doing. Yeah. You know, I just enjoy arm wrestling and teaching guys. At this point in my life, 
you know, uh-huh. training with guys. I don't care if I ever go to another tournament, actually, or a super match, honestly. I just enjoy hanging out with the guys, training them. Okay. So, and then if a, if a tournament does come up, uh, I'll go to it. I don't train really hard. Right. But I'll go. So. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, I don't know if you're – you probably maybe not remember the exact time, but I do. I met you at uh, the reg- at the regionals in uh, Charlotte. This first time I ever spoke with you. It was uh, probably my second – you wouldn't probably wouldn't remember it because, you know – I was a lot smaller back then, <laughs> but anyways, it was like a year or something ago, and I remember you, uh, if I remember correctly, you laid down purposely to your training partner, and then you went up the the B side and won. Yeah. But uh, anyways, I had just spoke to you there, because I had seen you in older videos, and I was like, hey, hey, I'm Derek. <laughs> and anyways, but uh, I just pulled novice, but that's the first time I had met you, and I seen you again at James Rodriguez's and, uh, and all that, and so... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you'll show up the tournaments. I know that. I remember when you walked in. I actually remember speaking to you, and I remember you being actually quite friendly. I, I was not sure how it was going to go at first. Yeah, no, I remember speaking to you at James's, and I, yeah. I think at the tournament, too. Yes, I do yeah. remember. Yeah, Definitely. we arm wrestled at James's a little bit. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just love arm wrestling, you yeah. know. So, and but, so uh, Well, I'm glad you were honest with me about uh, about your stance and opinion on that, for sure. And yeah, so, I'm, people hate me for it, but that's just my opinion. Well, I mean, you know? they, really, they really can't because, you know, other people, it's it's pretty much everybody's own choice. And, you know, it's it's just your opinion. I yeah. Mean, I had to be honest. I've tried it before. My neighbor has low testosterone, and um, he offered to give me a little bit for free. And I said, yeah, I'll try it, just because I didn't know what it was about. So, right. I mean, and I've actually gotten a little bit better since I've been on it for a few weeks. Yeah. So, I mean, people may be mad at me for that. <laughs> My team might be mad at me for that. But I mean, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not a matter of being mad. It's just it's just when you get to a certain level and you're working so hard all the time and then like for example, if I beat a guy in a tournament uh-huh. and I beat another guy, I beat 10 guys in a tournament, then all of a sudden they want to uh, super match with me and then they come to the match three months later yeah. 30 yeah I, a... I cannot tell you how many times that's happened i'm like that's not the same guy that wanted the super match with me this is a different guy right you know so i i'm consistently the same if if i if i arm wrestle t- next week or six weeks down the road i'm basically the same guy so let me ask you this if uh if you take a match, would you train and, and uh, try to do ready goes and build up anything? Or would you just keep going how you're going and just show up? Yeah, I don't do ready goes. I've never done ready goes, really. I just – I, I try to put pressure well, – I, I may try to put pressure in the position that they're not used to so they can't go. So I'll eliminate their go by hand position or a uh, different pressure up or down a side. Okay. So I'll try to change what he has to do because he's not going to feel comfortable in what I'm doing. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so I never practice ready. Go. I practice getting stronger always. So in practice, when I pull, I practice where the guy is at his strongest. Uh-huh. Wherever he's at his strongest, that's where I want to pull him. Okay. I never do that with the guy's weak spots unless he wants me to. Okay. So, so I want I want the best from the guy so I can get stronger in those positions. Okay. okay. And after that, I work on some of my other stuff, but I usually it's more time under tension and it's and it's more holding and it's more wrist position, hand position, so stuff okay. stuff like that. But uh. Yeah, so I always work from uh, the other guy's strongest. All right, yeah. Well, I appreciate you explaining all that. Um, yeah. Do you, can you uh, talk a little bit about any goals maybe you've had through your whole career, according to, like, uh, maybe some that you've made and accomplished, whether it be a state title or whatever, versus, you know, so maybe some goals that you still have that you're still kind of actively working on, whether it be, like, hey, my goals to train new guys or my goals to invest in the sport? 
Yeah. Right. So my 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 goal ultimately was to be national champion. Okay. And it took me eleven tries. Uh, my first ten tries, I got five seconds and five thirds. And then eleventh try, I won left and right. Yeah. So, yeah. so it took me eleven tries. And after that, I was like, I'm I'm good, you know. And then I I made it to the Yukon Jack World Championships, and I ended up like fifth or sixth. I lost to John. I lost it to uh, best edge, I think. So, but I mean, I, I can't count how many state titles I have. Right, I wasn't asking you. I, was I, I have no. Yeah, there's so many. Well, so. Uh, let me. Well, if you don't mind, uh, if you don't mind uh, putting it out there, you mind saying what day your your uh, practice is, or if it's open, or or anything like that. You know, do you know yeah, our, our practice on the, are, on the same day every week, or do you announce it, or or do you well, whatever go day, somewhere else? Whatever day the guys really want. But normally it's uh, right now. It used to be Wednesday and Saturday. Now it's Thursday and Sunday. Oh, okay. Oh, so two times a week. Yeah, I I really like to practice every forty-eight to seventy-two hours, but we're doing seventy-two to ninety-six hours. So I, I'd rather pull three times a week. So I might have to come make a practice. Yeah. A yeah. I, I've tried to hit people's practices. Like I went up to in Boone for those guys up there. I trained uh -huh. with them. I, I'm trying to hit all the spots just to train with guys and help help them out if they want any advice on anything. But yeah, so I mean back in the day I would pull in the hook one day, top roll the next, wraps the next. So then I, I've changed it up where I'll pull top roll or then hook and then straps. Uh -huh. So I basically I do, I try to tell the other guys, but a lot of times the other guys want to do their own tra training practice. Uh -huh. So ba basically is what I, what I do. All right. Yeah. That's pretty straight. Well, um... yeah. and the other thing about practice is like if you're with the same, group of guys say you practice with the same five five guys right uh -huh. and, you, and you're practicing twice a week every 72 to 96 hours when the new guy comes in that hasn't pulled in a couple weeks you know we're broken down a little bit so right. norm so normally if that new guy comes in at our practice i'm going to break him down a little bit to get him a little bit tired so he's just not beating up on the other guys or hurting the other guys Oh, okay. You know, because like I said, we're we're in a certain practice mode, and this guy comes in and just wants to flash everybody, and that we don't hit in practice. Yeah, I don't do like that either. I'm I just local and I'm easy, but but every once in a while, when leading up to a tournament, I like to do a couple of ready goes, just like leading up to. But I don't always. I'm easy too. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I I guess too because when I was younger, I was really fast. Oh, uh, I'm so fast. I didn't naturally have to do ready goes. So I, I was concentrating on building strength. Yeah. But uh, so every 48, when you're younger, I would say every 48 to 72 hours, you should be pulling. Right. You know? Well, honestly, I think the reason I do more ready goes is because a lot of times when I, if I win, I need, it's usually I feel against people stronger than me. So I use speed to like get here before they start going. And so for me, just getting the timing down and getting like a good, just like snap is what I try, but I don't beat up on my gut on anybody either. Even if they're weaker, I stay between 10 and two. And if I take wrist position, I'll give it back or something like that. I, mean, I don't, I don't just stonewall pe people or pe I don't even see any point in pinning somebody in practice. Right. Even when yeah. I do a ready go, it's more, mainly for just position. I'm not hit. I'm not slamming for the pad. I normally just fire back and try to like get hand position or or try to get no, you know, like a wrist position and a hook. You know. Yeah. It's not like, you know, because then everybody's sore. So what's the point? Like, yeah. Like I said, everything I do is to get stronger because it, it is a strength sport. Mm -hmm. So get to a certain level. It, it becomes more about strength, right? Than anything else. So you got to look at the long term, 
like in the, the you know the it's I call it a marathon. You can't, it's uh-huh. not instant gratification. You, you win a match, it's great. Yeah. I would even go to tournaments, and I would always pull guys where they were strong, like in practice. Right. And if they beat me, they beat me. I was okay with it, but uh, I would I would just purposely pull them at their strong spot. Even in super matches, I would enter a super match, and I all right, I'm gonna pull this guy the first match where he's that strong because i felt if i could stop him at least stop him even if i didn't beat him if i could stop him i know the next time the second match i'd i'd probably beat him if i can just wear him down in his strong spot then i go to a hook top roll press or something else Uh that's a good idea Um, yeah we're in the strap so and hand position is really important in arm wrestling. Mm-hmm. How, how you grip and, and, and your wrist position, knuckle position. I mean, it's this the posture of your opponent. If he's leaning, leaning in, leaning out. If his shoulders are in or his shoulders are out, where the angle of the table, how he's angled. It's so, there's so many things that are, that's involved in arm wrestling that 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 you look at. Like if I looked at you, I can. You're a top roller by your body composition. That, right. Yeah, I have a, I do have one of the longest arms at practice, even though I'm not the tallest. It's kind right. of strange. So, so if I seen you arm wrestle once, and if you do, if you top roll this way, yeah, yeah. the time I'm going to hook you. I'm going to try hooking you if I see you top rolling like this instead of like this. Uh-huh. So, because I know if I can turn your palm up, I got you. Mm-hmm. As you pop up, you're going to be spread out, and your shoulders going to be back, not in. Mm-hmm. And then there's no coming back from that, unless you go straight out and do a Michael Todd straight out move, possibly. But you're in a bad position. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. So the, and then your wrist position, like when you arm wrestle, I seen you go. Just when you made that motion like this, your wrist is your wrist is underneath. You, you need to go this way with your wrist on top. Uh-huh. Always wrist on top. Not a... So like not like this. I need to be like like how? Like this. Oh, this, like that. This, not not this yeah. position. Not this position. Yeah, not that. Not that. Yeah, I need to be yeah. like that. Oh. You don't want to see. You don't want to see your wrist underneath. Okay. Unless driving straight up with to get up to get your wrist on top of the other guys so but there's a lot i mean like that yeah yeah so i think i'm supinating too hard aren't i i need to yeah. you know, instead See, of going like this i need to go yeah your palm I want your palm facing your face yeah you don't want that oh you don't okay you need to be facing the ground yeah you got to be like in this position yeah, I got you. In in that position, your your wrist needs to be on top of your opponent's wrist, not underneath it. When you turn your hand, when you turn your palm up, your wrist is underneath your opponent, uh-huh. and you don't want that. That's true. Okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Keep your wrist on top, <laughs> even in top roll, hook, anything. Mm-hmm. So. Well, uh, I'll tell you, uh, Lattice in South Carolina is coming coming up next weekend. This Saturday, right? Is it this Saturday? What are you doing? Well, uh, I might be, I might be rafting down the Catawba River. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say because if you dare me to go there, I might just do it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm planning on going. A bunch of the guys I train are going, so really? they'll all be there. You know, Marco. Yeah. Yeah, I pulled him in the super match. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a good fellow. Yeah, he's he's good. He's coming along. He's only been in the sport about 10 months, something like that. So yeah, it was a fun time. Good. Yeah. Yeah, he went down to Greensboro and uh, he had like several people with him. It was a great time and Damian had a bunch of other people. And uh, yeah, it was like uh two or three guys from our team had matches with with just people from all over. And uh I guess we're playing another one. Yeah, I, I try to make that. Yeah. So, I mean, who who wins is kind of irrelevant in all those practice super matches. We're all so new. I just feel like it's a good yeah. experience. Yeah. 
I mean, it's and not just, only that, but when somebody beats you, now you got somebody you can go rematch. <laughs> That's what I like. Yeah. You know, work hard, train hard, and see if they're working just as hard. Because if they're not, you'll beat them. That's how I feel. Yeah. I, yeah. In the last 10 years, the sport in North Carolina of arm wrestling has really grown. Yeah. Really, it's really good to see. Really is. There's a lot of good young, especially in the lighter weights, too. There's a lot of good young guys uh-huh. in the coming up. Yeah. Actually, to tell you the truth, um, I went from being a super heavy to a 198, but I, I haven't pulled a pro tournament yet. But uh, yeah. I'm down to like 205 pounds. I got out of there because my hand was a little too small. And I enjoy having a little bit bigger hand and a little height on the guys. If I yeah. Did it. And so it's been, yeah. uh, it's been fun. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. I lost weight and everything and taking it more serious. And so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's good. My first tournament, I was 230-something. I got down to 190 for tournaments, 198. Oh, cool. so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's it's really good. I wish we had more big guys. We have a couple that I'm training and stuff that are pretty good. Uh-huh. But uh, there's, I would say there's more lightweight guys that could be really good. Yeah, there are quite a few. Yeah. That's for sure. Nice to see well, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I uh, I appreciate you talking for a couple minutes. I've been wanting to have you on. I've been trying to have everybody on I can, but I knew you were good. I knew you had experience. I knew you had big wins on all kinds of people. And so uh, do you have a match coming up at all? Uh, no, the only match I have coming up, it's a charity match actually against Steve Walker from New Jersey. I know him. Real loud Steve Walker. <laughs> Likes the ref, talks real yeah. loud. I know. Yeah. So he's uh, he, wants, he wants to pull me in November at a charity match in Virginia, I believe. Oh, okay. Cool. So I'm gonna gonna pull him. I know Steve for about 20, 25 years. So awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, there's been a lot of good arm wrestlers over the years, and it's funny to see a couple of those guys still at the top doing mm-hmm. really well. Absolutely. So. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Paul, I'm, I'm really glad you came on for a few minutes. It was nice talking to you. All right, buddy. And um, appreciate all the knowledge and everything. And if you don't mind, whenever I edit the video and post it on Facebook, I'll or, uh, post it on YouTube. I'll make a Facebook post and tag you in it. All right. And uh, I'd love to come pull at you guys. I just got to get some time. I'll come up there and uh, pull at you all. We'll we're, just in Fa- we're just in Fayetteville. Where, where are you at? I'm in uh, right outside of Charlotte. Oh, okay. So it's I'm like what? about forty. I'm about forty-five minutes from Rick Layton's house. Oh, okay. Uh, to, to South Carolina. All right. So, well, yeah. Well, we'll I'll we'll get up with you one way or the other. And I appreciate the talk, man. Yeah. Hey, you got any other questions? That's it. <laughs> I can't think of any right all. <laughs> All right. Well, that that was well, good. actually. I will ask you one more. If uh, right. I guess, I guess you noticed by my symmetry that I I could have been a top roller. Do you do that with most people, or or what do you recommend people do first? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I would recommend you top rolling. But the one thing I like to do with the guys, I always tell them the first year you should be hooking a lot. Yeah, to get your elbow in there. Not only that just to build your strength because you're going to build more strength hooking than actually top rolling, you know? So uh, I'm into building strength. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking long-term. So get stronger in the hook and it'll help you top roll. That's, that's what I truly believe that it it will definitely help, help you top roll. So and when you get put in a bad position, you need to be able to either stay in the hook in that in the hook or transfer from a hook to a top roll. You know, uh-huh. you guys should be working on on uh, moving from hook to top roll and from top roll to hook. Right. And, I do that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And pulling with the full hand top roll with and protecting your wrist and with a high high knuckle. So, okay. and then with a low hand top roll too, because you're going to go, if your arm's so long in the 198 pound class, you're going to have to do a lot of, you may have a lot of top, uh, low hand top roll hook, hookers against you. Okay. 
So that's that's what I would be working on with you is low hand top roll and and hooking. Honestly, okay. that's going to be your weakness. Okay. You know, because your arm is going to be probably longer than most guys in the 98 and your hand's going to be longer. Not maybe not thicker, but longer. Yeah, longer, not thicker. So so you want to you want to stay away from the other guys the other guy's arm basically. Right. You you want to stay away. Your wrist should never be near the other guy's arm. So, but I can show you. Yeah, I'll come by. I'm, I got a little time on the weekend. I can travel, and I got and uh, so I'll come. I'll come by. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll show you. Appreciate the talk, man. All right. You yeah, have a good night, brother. I wait, I'll have you on again. I'll think of some some different kind of questions, and I'll talk to you again. Oh yeah, I mean, I got so much thought on training and stuff i i, I mean i i there's so many things involved hand and wrist arms and posture of the other person everything so uh, i'll do it all right. all right buddy all right take care thanks man all right, bye.